Hello. Today we're going to focus on monopoly, specifically second degree price discrimination. Under second degree price discrimination, a monopolist is trying to find two different bundles to charge two different types of consumers, one with a smaller willingness to pay and one with a larger willingness to pay. Let's take a look graphically. On the left, I'll put the small willingness to pay person's graph, and on the right, the large willingness to pay person's graph. What we're trying to do is capture both consumer surpluses as much as possible. So to start, we'll look at the small willingness to pay consumer, plug in our own marginal cost curve, and then try to find a bundle that eats up this consumer surplus where we're at the price of our marginal cost. We're also going to highlight this area below as well because this is our cost to production. So what we should charge is our own cost plus whatever consumer surplus the small willingness to pay consumer would have got under perfect competition. This will be our price of the smaller bundle. For the larger bundle, conceptually what we're trying to do is make sure they do not purchase the small willingness to pay bundle. We want to maximize profits, and in order to do so, we should charge the highest possible amount for the large willingness to pay bundle without pushing them to buy the small willingness to pay bundle. To do so, let's plug in the quantity of the smaller willingness to pay bundle into the large willingness to pay bundle consumer. What we do is find the area of this portion of their graph where we are plugging in the quantity of the small willingness to pay bundle. From there, we take our red area and we subtract our purple area from it. What that does is tells us how much consumer surplus is left over for the large willingness to pay person. In order to not push the large willingness to pay person to purchase the small bundle, we must leave them at least this much consumer surplus when pricing the large bundle. To price the large bundle, let's take one more look at the original large willingness to pay consumers graph, like this. What we should do is find this entire area here, highlighted in teal, and subtract out the cost, or rather the consumer surplus that was left over from before. So I'll highlight that consumer surplus in this golden yellow color. We're taking that triangle right there minus the tip that we're not paying for here, right? So that little edge of that triangle is not part of that. Finding this teal area right here. And then what we're going to do is subtract out our consumer surplus that we found that was left over from purchasing the small bundle. This will push our large willingness to pay consumer to purchase the large willingness to pay bundle. That will maximize our profits as a monopolist. Let's take a look at this specific problem to illuminate further what we're talking about here. To start, we're given a large willingness to pay consumer, their demand curve, and a small willingness to pay consumer's demand curve, as well as our own sort of supply curve, which is our marginal cost curve, and also the quantities that we're targeting for our bundles, an eight-shot bundle and a one-shot bundle. The one-shot bundle will go to the small willingness to pay consumer, and the eight-shot bundle to the large willingness to pay consumer. So to start, let's start with the small willingness to pay consumer's graph and figure out how much we should charge for their bundle. To do so, we're going to once again draw their graph, plug in 4 here, because that's where we're starting here, 4 minus 2q. We're also going to draw in our marginal cost line of 
and we're going to figure out the quantity that this person would have purchased under perfect competition if we had a marginal cost of two. So we're going to plug in two for the price into this demand curve. So we're going to say two equals four minus two Q. Add two Q to both sides. Subtract two here. And we're left with a quantity of one. So again, this will be the one shot package. This is our quantity right here. And we're going to charge this consumer this entire purple portion. So this triangle and also this rectangle underneath, which is the cost for the monopolist to produce. So this entire area will be what we will charge for the small willingness to pay bundle. To find this area, what we're going to do is find the area of the triangle and then of the rectangle. This is a two again, so the triangle's height will be two and its length will be one. We can represent this here. So two times one times one half is an area of one for the triangle. Then for the rectangle, we have an area of two. Two times one is two. So total, we should charge $3 for the small bundle. This will be useful also in calculating how much we should charge for the large bundle. OK, so $3 small bundle. Let's move on to the large bundle's price. To figure this out, we're going to graph out the large consumer's demand curve. Here's our marginal cost line at two again. Our large demander has a demand curve of P equals 10 minus Q. So we're going to plug in 10 on the Y axis and 10 on the X axis for this demand curve. From there, we should figure out how much this consumer purchases at a price of two or a marginal cost of two. So we will plug in two for price here. 2 equals 10 minus Q. So Q equals 8. The large willing to pay consumer will consume 8 units under our marginal cost of 2, which is also how much we're targeting for the large bundle. So what we need to figure out is how much consumer surplus the large willingness to pay consumer gets from purchasing the small willingness to pay consumers bundle. This means we should plug in a quantity of one and figure out the area of this rectangle and triangle combined here. So to do the math here, what we need to figure out is the area of the triangle right here, the rectangle right here, and then also the rectangle right here. So to start, let's figure out the triangle. At a quantity of one, for our demand curve, we say P is equal to 10 minus one. We have a price of nine here. This means our height of this rectangle is seven. Our lengths of each of these shapes will be one. So Length here is two, two by one, seven by one, and one by one triangle. So let's break that up. There's a one by one triangle. We have a seven by one rectangle and a two by one rectangle. Okay, so the one by one triangle will have an area of one half times one times one or one half. The rectangle here will have an area of seven. And the rectangle here will have an area of two. All combined, we will have a total area of 9.5. OK, so from there, we should subtract out 
the consumer surplus, or rather the small willingness to pay bundles price to figure out what consumer surplus we have left. So our small willingness to pay bundles price is $3. So in total, we have a consumer surplus of 6.5 left over for the large willingness to pay consumer. We should ensure that this consumer gets a surplus of 6.5 when we price the large bundle, or else they'll turn to the small bundle instead. So the large willingness to pay consumer has this graph, which we'll graph out again, 10 by 10 with a $2 marginal cost, eight units here. So we'll find first the area of this rectangle and this triangle. and then subtract out the consumer surplus that we should leave them. So price of two here, our triangle has a height of eight and a length of eight. So eight times eight times one half will be our first calculation. That'll be 32. And then we have our rectangle, which is two by eight. The two by eight value will be 16. So for a total of 48, before we subtract out a consumer surplus, we should then subtract out that consumer surplus. So minus 6.5 to get our 41.5 price of the large bundle. So 41.5 is the price of our large bundle. The question is asking, what is the price of the small and large bundle? So we found that our small bundle is priced at $3. So that leaves option A or C on the table. And then the price of our large bundle is 41.5, which means we go with option A.